Hi, everyone. Welcome to this session on what's new in Google Earth. My name is Patrick, and I'm a product manager on the Google Earth team. Today, I'm joined by my colleagues, Brian, Sia, Damien, and Chi. Over the past year, we've launched a few really awesome experiences and seen so many incredible projects made by you all. First off, back in April, we launched Time Lapse in Google Earth, the world's largest time lapse of the entire planet in 3D. This version of time lapse seamlessly embeds over 37 years of time and 24 million satellite photos to create an entirely new world to explore. To help make sense of what we saw in time lapse, we partnered with Carnegie Mellon University's Create Lab to create thematic guided tours in Voyager. We also put out 800 free, public, and ready to use time lapse videos available to download as MP4s. Time lapse footage can help nonprofits, educators, researchers, and advocates to leverage visual evidence of our changing planet. I also want to highlight some of the amazing Earth projects you all have created from this past year. First off, I wanted to showcase this awesome project by Teradapt, who have modeled habitat projections due to climate change for a range of species using Earth Engine, exported them as tile overlays, and mapped that in 3D in Google Earth for visualization and presentation. This is a new feature that Brian will tell you more about in just a bit. The second project I want to highlight is by Climate Central, a nonprofit news organization that analyzes and reports on climate science. Climate Central launched an incredible visualization in Earth that highlights the effects of climate change and what sea level rise will look like if Earth warms to two or four degrees Celsius. They also launched a fantastic video visualization made with Earth Studio and hundreds of images showing the effects of sea level rise in multiple global locations. Check out this link on screen to learn more. The third project I want to highlight is Accessible Life by Progetto Recycle, a nonprofit organization out of Villa Tora in Italy. Progetto Recycle uses Google Earth to help people explore, discover, and share outdoor accessible places, and users can contribute to this global accessibility map by themselves. This feature will be featured in the Accessibility Panel and Social Inclusion Lightning Talks at geo good this week. To try this out yourself, check the resources section for this talk where we'll provide links to learn more. Lastly, I want to send props to The Lookout. The Lookout is doing an amazing job helping communities that are affected by wildfires and crisis on the US West Coast by providing in-depth analysis of up-to-date fire perimeter data and insights. This fire season alone, The Lookout has produced almost 30 analysis videos and help people on the ground affected by the Dixie and Calder fires to make better decisions in times of active crisis. Now, let's look at what's new in Earth. We'll explore three main themes today. More ways to get your data into Earth, better data management and streamlined editing flows, and carrying forward features from Earth Pro. You've been creating amazing projects with just a few tools available to you in Earth on web. But we know you have a lot of amazing maps and layers that you've created using other tools, and we want to make it easier for you to view this data in context of Earth. We also want to give you better ways to manage your data in Earth. What works for 20 features doesn't work for hundreds, and we want to make it easier to stay organized. We also want to get the small things right and make sure that the workhorse features that you're used to or expect are there for you. Now, I'm going to hand it over to Sia to tell you, more about, tell you about more ways to get your data into Google Earth on the web. Hi everyone, I'm Zia, an engineer on the Google Earth team. The first feature we want to highlight is that it is now possible to take your existing KMLs to the cloud. Converting KMLs to Earth cloud projects means that you can collaborate on projects similar to Google Docs or Google Slides, and you can access them from anywhere, even on mobile. To use this feature, simply open a KML file in Earth. Here's a KML file of U.S. counties that I downloaded from the U.S. Census Bureau. Now click the overflow menu in the upper right-hand corner of the projects panel and select import to cloud and the project will start converting to a cloud project. Now that it's completed, I can share this with someone and we can make edits together. The initial version will only support points, lines, polygons, folder, and tiled overlays, something that Brian will speak more about in a little bit. We hope this covers the majority of kinds of maps that you would want to bring into Earth. However, we would love any feedback you might have on other critical functionality that should also be included. This feature isn't publicly available yet, 
but stick around and sign up to become a trusted tester for this and many other features towards the end of this session. Now I want to hand it over to Brian to talk more about tiled overlays. Hi everyone, I'm Brian, an engineer on the Earth team. Do you remember that example we showed earlier from Teradapt and the tile overlays Patrick mentioned? I'm gonna show you a new feature in Earth that made that example possible by letting you bring in custom tile sets and visualize them in Earth using tile overlays. Tile overlays in Earth use tiled web maps, which is a common standard that can be created and exported from most geospatial software today, including our own Earth Engine, Azure's ArcGIS, and many others. I'm going to give you a quick demo of how tile overlays work and what you'll be able to do with them. I'm going to create a new tile overlay feature in my Earth project, and I'm going to point it at a URL where my tiles are hosted. And you'll see they are now rendered on the globe. This is an example from an open topo map. You'll notice that as I zoom in, new tiles get loaded automatically at the right zoom levels. Here's another tile overlay, Earth at Night, courtesy of NASA, which was exported from Earth Engine, and now I can view it in Earth too. When you load a new tile overlay that gets its tiles from somewhere out on the web, you will see a small notification near the bottom of the window letting you know where the tiles are being loaded from. If you're not pointing your project to your own hosted tiles, it's good practice to let the person who owns the server that you're using know that you're using their tiles, so they're not surprised by hosting costs if your project gets a lot of traffic. Now, you can use the property editor for tile overlays as well. You can name your overlay, you can add a description, which might include a credit, and you can even decide to add an opacity widget so viewers of your project can adjust the opacity of the overlay right from inside the info box. You can have multiple tile overlays in the same project, and you can set their opacities individually using the document or the project view. We've also added a few new features to help with better data management and more streamlined and faster editing flows in Earth. First off, we've made it faster to rapidly add new features, such as placemarks, to projects, and we will no longer prompt you to select which project to save with each individual feature. We've also made it easier to quickly jump between features when editing their content and styles. For example, I can now switch to this feature, change some styles, click directly on another feature, change its styles, all without exiting the property editor. We made these changes to help speed up your workflow, and we'll be doing more here in the future. We've also added better support for folders to make it easier to stay organized within your project. You can now add new folders to projects, and you can create new features inside those folders. We've also added support for multi-select and drag and drop to make it easier to quickly organize your content. You can even delete multiple features at once by right-clicking when you have a selection. Now I'm going to hand it back over to Zia to talk about a few other new features we're carrying forward from Earth Pro. Thanks, Brian. Earth Pro is an amazing product, and we want to make sure we're bringing the best of Pro to the web and mobile versions of Earth. We believe bringing cloud capabilities to Earth will help turbocharge workflows for everyone using both classic Earth Pro and the new versions. The first feature I want to highlight is imagery date. Now in Earth Web, Simply hover the mouse over any pixel on Earth to see when the imagery was captured down in the status bar. You'll often see a date range, including the start and end dates for when the imagery is captured. We show a date range if the tiles under the mouse or the set of visible tiles in the viewport contain images captured over multiple instances. An example of this could be when we collect imagery of large 3D cities or areas over multiple days. On mobile, just long press anywhere on the screen and a card will pop up and highlight when the imagery was taken. Another new feature you'll notice in the status bar is a new scale bar. This works a bit differently from the scale bar in Earth Pro. Our new scale bar is dynamic and changes depending on where you position your cursor in your map view. 
The dynamic nature is most pronounced when tilting the globe and viewing large areas. For example, the scale changes depending on my cursor's placement on the map. In the example here, one inch on the map may represent one mile in the lowland area in the foreground of the image. However, off in the distance in the mountains, one inch may actually represent 10 miles since the mountains are much further away. Now I'm going to hand it over to Chi. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Zia. Hi, everyone. I'm Chi. I'm a user experience designer. I just joined the Earth team a few months ago, and I'm super jazzed to be here. And I'm really looking forward to hearing all of your great feedback on Earth. Uh, but for now, we're going to take a look at a few new features and capabilities coming to Earth in the coming months. These features are not fully launched yet, but after this session, you'll be able to join the Google Earth Trusted Testers program to get access and to try out all these features as we roll them out. So the first feature is uh, we are bringing creation tools to the mobile platform. This means that you can create maps right on your mobile device and save them to collaborative cloud-based projects. So right now on mobile, you can mostly just view projects. You can open a KML file from your local device, or you can open an existing project from Drive, but you can't do much more than view. But now we're building a more robust experience where you can create new projects, you can mark up the map, use your mobile's GPS location to drop pins, you can take photos, and you can share all on your mobile device. Uh, so for example, some different ways to use this technology, you could kick off a project on desktop and pick it up in the field to add more data points, or you could have multiple users contribute to a cloud-based project uh, for folks back home to be able to evaluate in real time. Uh, so let's do a quick demo. All right, so let's say I work for a trail association um, that's responsible for management of a pretty extensive trail system in Oregon. And I have to keep track of what trails are in need of repair. And so to do this, I'm often out on the trails scouting. Now with Google Earth, I can scout and record this information on my mobile device. So before I hit the trail, I might load a bunch of place marks or points of interest for where previous scouting trips have uh, already told me that there are sites that need some attention. And with the new updates, I can now edit or update these points with my mobile device. Anything from changing the name or the description to uploading any pictures that I take straight from my phone. And so for this pin right here, I'll rename the pin to done and I'll type in the description box, site remediated, no further action needed. And then uh, I wanna attach a photo, so I'll just click this button here and I'm able to use my phone's camera to quickly take and upload a photo. Done. <laughs> Okay, so now let's say I'm walking on the trail and I find a new site that needs repair. And so now I'll tap my location button in Google Earth and be able to add that precise location as a placemark to my project. So that this way, when I'm back home, I'll be able to open up this project on any device and see all of the updates that we were able to make while we were out on the trail. And so this will be available for trusted testing on iOS today and will be coming to Android in the coming weeks. Another mobile related update is that we now support the Apple Pencil on iPad. This is really helpful if you want to tactically mark up the map or measure an object. Uh, we're super excited about this new feature. Uh, we'll continue to refine our Apple Pencil support as we move forward. Now I'm going to hand it over to Damien to showcase a few other new features that are coming to Earth in the coming months. Thanks, Chi. Hi, everyone. My name is Damien. I'm an engineer in the Google Earth team, and this is my first time participating in Geo4Good. A feature we're launching in the coming months is CSV import. This is our first step toward adding support for bulk data import and better data visualization. With this feature, you can import a local file or a file from Drive. Then you'll get a preview of the table, 
And once you've selected the latitude and the longitude, you'll see place marks appearing interactively on the map. You can configure the styles to apply to all the place marks, or you can configure a condition to set different styles to different place marks based on values in the table. You can also configure the style to show a gradient of colors, again, based on table data. Now, another feature I want to present is the brush tool. This is a freeform drawing tool that lets you paint directly on the Earth's surface. To do that, I simply click on this icon in the lower left corner, and I can start scribbling on the, on the Earth. This is uh, Danville, where I live. I can adjust the brush size. I can make a larger, larger brush, and this is ideal for filling out areas. With the eraser tool, I can erase strokes, or I can even carve out in the area I just drew. I can modify the thickness of the border. I can change the color of the border and the color of the fill. I can adjust the opacity so that I can see through it. This tool here lets me move the map without drawing. All right. Here we have Mount Diablo. This is the summit. So if you're looking for campgrounds, in Mount Diablo, you have the uh, uh, Wildcat, but I wouldn't recommend it because it's too low in altitude. But this one, the Juniper uh, Campground, has a terrific view. Let me show you. From there, you have a terrific view of the bay, and you can even see the drawing that we just did. We're super excited about uh, adding uh, these capabilities to Earth. And this uh, feature will come to Earth Trusted uh, Testers soon. Now, back to you, Patrick. Awesome. Thanks, Damien. So that's it for Google Earth. I hope you're as excited as we are about these updates. And if you want to try out any of the unreleased features we've demoed and coming features and give us feedback, please join the Google Earth Trusted Testers program. You'll receive an email inviting you to join today please check your inbox and sign up. Now, let's take a look at Google Earth Studio. We've seen some incredible projects from users and partners over the past year, including Climate Central, Vox, The New York Times, and many, many more. We're super impressed to see how Earth content is helping drive storytelling and raising awareness. It's Monday, June 1st, the third day of demonstrations in Philadelphia. To make more advanced 3D integrations with Earth Studio, I want to highlight this awesome Earth Studio and Blender 3D integration by the team over at the Magiscope. Today, Earth Studio users can easily export their camera to Adobe After Effects, but with the new Blender import tool made by Magiscope, users can easily get their studio projects into Blender, including converting KML files to full 3D paths that can be styled and animated. This is a super useful Blender plugin to more easily add 3D objects to your Earth Studio projects. You can check it out and contribute to it on GitHub. Uh, big thanks to Magiscope for building such a useful integration for the community. We'll also provide links in the resources section of this talk. I also want to mention that we've launched support for video rendering in our studio. You can now easily get a video output from Studio by rendering in the cloud. Simply select video in the render setup screen, and you will get an email with a link to download your video when the render is complete. OK, that's all we had for you today. Thank you so much for tuning into this session on what's new in Earth. Have a great time at Geo for Good. Bye. 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 Bye.